Yes, the Creality K2 Pro is no longer a newcomer on the market. You've already seen the first reviews, benchmarks and tolerance tests, nothing new there. But that's exactly why it's getting interesting now. Because only with a bit of distance you really see how well a printer performs and the market has never been more crowded and competitive than it is today. At the moment you can get the Creality K2 Pro with CFS from Geek Buying for around 899 euros. That clearly places it above the typical entry class, which sits around 450 to 500 euros, but still below the true high-end models, which usually start well above 1,300 euros. That means the K2 Pro sits right in the upper mid-range to low on premium segment, an area where many of you are currently wondering, is the price performance ratio enough or should I invest a bit more? And that's exactly what I want to find out. What do you actually get for 899 euros and what's missing? One thing I can say right away, for this price, the K2 Pro delivers an impressively strong overall package, both in print quality and in terms of workflow and everyday usability. Of course, it's not perfect. During real-world use, I noticed a few issues that Creality still hasn't fully solved even after years and which, in the worst case, could lead to problems. So, sit back. This is going to be an exciting one. Before we dive into the current results, let's rewind for a moment. When the K2 Pro first launched, many YouTubers and reviewers shared their impressions, and the feedback was mixed. Back then, the overall sentiment was something like, wow, Creality is offering a ton of hardware for the money. But just as quickly came the follow-up, there is still plenty of work left to do. So to understand how far the printer has come, let's first take a look at what reviewers criticized around six months ago before we check what Creality has improved since then. At release, most testers agreed the K2 Pro looked like a compact industrial printer. A 300 by 300 by 300 millimeter build volume, core XY motion system, actively heated chamber, multicolor support, linear rails, network printing, a camera, even root access. All features you'd normally only find on machines well above a thousand euros. But after the first benchies, tolerance tests and a few larger projects, it quickly became clear the machine was good, but not consistently enough. Weakness number one, the wall quality. Many reviewers, including Aurora Tech, pointed out Solid overall print quality, but visible weaknesses on wall surfaces. Fine artifacts that stood out especially next to a Bamboo Lab X1C. It's not a disaster, but not top tier either. However, the quality has improved significantly. More on that in a moment. Weakness number two, the bed leveling and temperature behavior. It's another recurring topic was the print bed. The mesh was usable, but not perfect. The first layer on ABOS was slightly squished. Weakness number three, the multicolor, reliable, but slow. The CSF system worked reliably, but color changes took between 1.5 and 2.5 minutes. Lots of purge material, lots of waste, and exactly the same behavior as on the K2 Plus. So solid system, but far from efficient. Now let's see what became of those early weaknesses and how good the K2 Pro really is today. Let's start with the first impression. And honestly, the K2 Pro really surprised me here. Right out of the box, the machine feels like a small safe. Heavy, solid, absolutely stable. Creality doesn't use acrylic or plexiglass here, but real glass. The Creality took an interesting path with the motion system. Closed loop stepper motors. They are not true servos, but they constantly monitor their position, correct missed steps and run surprisingly quiet. Mechanically, that makes the K2 Pro one of the quieter core XY systems, at least in terms of access movement. The story is completely different with the CFS. The filament unit works reliably, but it's not exactly quiet. When spooling, retracting or changing filaments, you definitely hear it. So if you plan to print in your living room or office, keep in mind the CFS isn't the quietest component in the setup. This MMU system also lacks an active heating or drying function. The upside, you don't need a separate power cable, just two cables connected to the printer and the sync unit. I also really like the design. Even full, tightly wound or unevenly sized spools feed through without any issue. Many other MMU systems struggle with this kind of flexibility. Inside the printer, there's both a nozzle cleaner and a small poop chute. However, the opening for the purge waste is located at the back of the printer. So I've printed myself a small ramp. That way, the purge material slides neatly out of the side and can be collected in a little bowl. Works perfectly for me, at least. You will also find a chamber fan with filter pack and an auxiliary fan for additional pot cooling. A relatively new feature is the chamber heater. 
especially for technical filaments, maintaining a high and consistent chamber temperature is crucial to minimize the temperature difference between bed, part and air, preventing warping. Now about the print head. The front cover can be removed easily, giving great access to the nozzle and heatsink. A true quick swap system would have been nice in this price range. Some competitors already offer that, but at least you can remove the entire extruder with just three screws. Anyone who's ever disassembled a Clockwork 2 knows how valuable that is for maintenance. The hot end module can be removed with four screws. Interestingly, it consists of the heater, cold end block and very long integrated nozzle that also contains the heat break, which means you can't use standard Volcano or V6 nozzles. One concern I have, the printhead temperature in high chamber heat. Many users wanted an actively heated chamber, but at 50 degrees, chamber temperature both the cold end and extruder motors fans are only pushing warm air. That caused the extruder gears and cold end block to get noticeably hot in my tests, increasing the risk of filament softening too early and clogging. Another weak point is the heater design. Its ceramic element that wraps around the entire hot end block Reports of failures have been pilling up on Discord and Reddit, and yes, one of mine failed too. To be fair, it's possible something happened during this assembly for the review, so I'm not blaming Creality, but the design is definitely fragile. Exactly what many photos online show when failures occur. If your heater suddenly stops working and you get the error TE2564, first check whether you still get 24 volts at the heater terminals. If yes, measure the contacts. If the circuit is open, heater is defective. Under warranty, quality support will replace it quickly, a simple photo is enough. There are also some nice details worth mentioning. The glass door opens and closes smoothly, the LED lighting gives excellent visibility, there is an RFID system for spools and cable routing the motors and the hot end looks far more refined than in earlier quality generations. An especially interesting part is the camera. The K2 Pro has two of them, one 720p camera for the chamber and a small nozzle cam mounted right on the print head. The nozzle cam, however, is used only for automatic calibration. No live stream, no browser access, no time lapse. Which is a shame since it would be so useful for error detection or cool footage. The chamber camera delivers solid 720p images, great for print monitoring. Built in time lapses work well though the image quality isn't good enough for YouTube shorts or cinematic footage, but perfectly fine for documentation. There are also a few minor flaws, a rear exhaust fan that's clearly audible, though still much quieter than this evening. Another odd design choice, the set end stops, is located at the bottom. That means the bed moves completely down for every set home, especially annoying right after heating or leveling since it wastes unnecessary time. Other manufacturers handle this more elegant, either with a top mounted switch or a nozzle probe. It's nitpicking, but that time adds up. After around 300 hours, one pulley started squeaking. At first, I suspected a bearing issue, but upon closer inspection, I found some dust near the pulley, likely belt residue or filament debris stuck in the tight pulley stack. A quick spray of silicone VD40 fixed it immediately. So yes, I recommend keeping a bottle of silicone spray around. <laughs> After 500 hours of total runtime, I can say, aside from the squeaky pulley and the heater issue, I had zero problems. Just remember, this isn't a kitchen's appliance. Weekly maintenance is part of the deal. You will find detailed maintenance instructions in the printer's display and in Creality's wiki. Let's move on to the software. And here, the K2 Pro delivers a mix of some really good ideas and a few weak spots that Creality has been dragging along for years. Starting with the most obvious one, the German translation. Unfortunately, it's still far from perfect. Some menus are translated correctly, while others look like Google Translate on a Monday morning. My clear recommendation, just set the printer to English right away. You will avoid confusion and everything feels much smoother to navigate. In general, you can adjust everything you need for everyday printing directly via the touchscreen. The menu layout is clean, the input responds quickly and the structure is logical enough that even beginners can easily find their way around. Even the quality slicer is better than its reputation. Yes, it's a customized version of well-known open source slicer, but Creality actually did a decent job with it. The print profiles work well, the material presets make sense and network transfers are fast. If you prefer using Orca slicer, that's no problem either. The K2 Pro accepts both methods without any issues. A major plus, the K2 Pro comes with a built-in fluid interface. Out of the box. That means you can access the printer through your browser, adjust settings, inspect the mesh or view logs just like you would on a DIY clipper setup. 
You can even gain full root access if you want to dive deeper. Though personally, I never needed it once in almost 500 print hours, the stock environment is stable enough for the day-to-day -day use. What I didn't like, however, were the automatic calibration functions. The K2 Pro, much like bamboo printers, has automatic flow and pressure advanced tuning. What might confuse beginners is that this calibration has nothing to do with the calibration options inside the slicer. When you start calibrating from the printer's touchscreen, small test lines are printed along the side of the bed and analyzed by the nozzle camera. Technically, this works really well. The calibration print looks correct and the print quality confirmed that the system does its job. But the problem shows up elsewhere when printing ABS. After automatic flow or PA calibration, the set offset often becomes incorrect. Either the bed mesh loads incorrectly or the start G-code sequence, which probes the mesh first and then runs the calibration, simply takes so long to 100 degrees bed temperature that the bed continues expanding during the process. The results? The nozzle ends up too close to the bed and too close doesn't just mean a poor first layer, it means really clogs. In my case, the filament jammed twice inside the hot end, both times after calibration runs with ABS. As soon as I disassembled the flow and PA auto calibration, all ABS prints went back to working perfectly. PLA prints never had this issue. With PLA, the auto calibration runs flawlessly. It seems the problem only occurs with ABS. Whether due to the start code, the mesh or terminal expansion, I couldn't definitely pin it down. If anyone out there has analyzed this behavior more closely, please share it in the comments. I'd really like to know whether you can confirm it or if it only happens under certain temperature conditions. That said, I want to emphasize this calibration issue was the only real software problem I've encountered during my entire tests. Multi-material printing with the CFS ran smoothly and even extremely long prints completed without a hitch. Aside from the slicer, you can also send prints directly from the Creality Cloud. The easiest way is through the mobile app, which is now clean and well organized. You can browse new 3D models or simply monitor your printer remotely from your smartphone. Many cloud models already come with a pre-configured K2 profile, allowing you to start a print without just a few clicks. No need to slice it yourself. Just make sure the profile matches your filament type. Most cloud profiles are made for PLA. If you want to print PDG, you still need to slice it manually. A quick channel check at this point. I just looked at the stats from our last video and 90% of the viewers weren't subscribed. So that's crazy. Not because of the vanity, but for a completely different reason. A small channel like ours almost never shows up in the feed that way. You simply don't see our videos even though you probably would if you could. And that means YouTube decides what you see, not you. So if you want to make sure you get our videos when you want to, hit subscribe. You help us a lot. This video took around 100 hours of work, so we can only keep going if you show us it's worth it. Now we've reached the point where every 3D printer runs out of excuses, the actual print results. First of all, all of the following shots were taken in a very brightly lit studio environment. That means every line, every tiny artifact looks far more pronounced than it would under normal lighting conditions. You will find all models linked in the video description and filament use can be accessed via the QR code. All prints were made using the generic profile, no pressure advance, no flow calibration. I started with the calibration cube to check dimensional accuracy. Even without calibration, the results were impressive. Despite the somewhat rough measuring method using calipers, the cube consistently measured close to 20 mm on all axes. The minor deviations were likely caused by the lack of pressure to one tuning, which can lead to slightly rounded or bulging corners. Next up was the MPOX test object, a model that simultaneously tests threads, overhangs, bridges and print-in-place joints. And honestly, the results immediately impressed me as well. The layer stacking is extremely clean. The visible lines you see in the footage come mostly from the lighting, not the print itself. Bridges are strong, the threaded parts unscrew smoothly and even the snap fit locks engage and release perfectly. What's especially noteworthy here? The wall issues that reviewers criticized at launch are now completely gone. This cleanly shows that Creality continued to optimize the printer even after release instead of leaving early buyers out in the cold. To see how well the K2 Pro handles overhangs, I've printed two specific test models, including angles up to 70 degrees. And I have to say, the results look almost too good. Both the side facing, the auxiliary fan and the opposite side showed excellent results. That's a level of overhang performance you don't often see, especially in this price range. Then I've printed a joint tolerance test to determine at what clearance moving parts still move freely. 
After breaking the parts loose, it became clear 0.05mm is the lower limit with a generic profile. The joint still moves, but it's noticeably tight. Keep in mind, I didn't calibrate flow or pressure advance for this filament. With calibration, the results would likely be even better. I also printed various gear demonstration models, which require very precise dimensional accuracy, otherwise nothing meshes properly. As you can see, every gear type ran absolutely smooth. Big shout out to the creator of those models, I would definitely be showing them to my son sometime. For multicolor printing, I've started with a simple two-color fidget spinner I once saw on YouTube. Again, the layer quality is superb and the color transition leaves no uneven stacking or blobbing. When it comes to multicolor prints with many color changes, you already know my opinion. The CFS system works reliably, but the technology inherently produces a huge amount of purge waste. That's why I personally recommend keeping it to a maximum of around 20 colors changes per object. Anything beyond that, I'd rather use a different system. Still, for testing purposes, I've printed a model with around 120 color changes. If you notice gradient transitions in the footage, that's just a slicing artifact. Since this test was only meant to check system stability, that wasn't a problem. The result, the K2 Pro completed the job flawlessly. No errors at all. But yes, the amount of waste produced was immense. In parallel, I printed many other models, as you will see in the timelapse footage. The goal was to accumulate print hours, because I don't believe in drawing conclusions after just 100 hours of testing. I aim for at least 500 hours to really evaluate how the components hold up under continuous operation. Of course, a true two-year long-term test isn't realistic for review, but within the context of a real-world test, this gives a solid and honest assessment. In summary, the Creality K2 Pro is a printer I would absolutely buy again. The combination of solid hardware, genuinely strong print quality and its many modern features makes it a machine that's simply fun to use, especially for PLA and all filaments that don't require high chamber temperatures. In that specific range, the K2 Pro delivers consistent, clean and reliable and without any surprises. But to stay honest, not everyone will be equally happy with this printer. If you print a lot of ABS, ASA or other heat resistant materials, you should know that the K2 Pro has two clear weak points, the somewhat fragile hotend heater and the potential for heat build up in the tool head at high chamber temperatures. For some users, these are manageable quirks, for others, they could become long-term annoyances. So here's how I'd sum it up. For PLA users, Makers of decorative parts and those printing functional components in normal temperature ranges who wants a well-rounded modern core XY system, clear recommendation. For power users working in high temperature environments, please think carefully about whether you're willing to live in with those thermal limitations. And personally, I definitely choose the K2 Bro again. But it's important that everyone evaluates for themselves whether they fall into the group this printer truly shines for or the one for whom it might not be a perfect match. And that's it for today. I really appreciate that you've stayed until the end. It honestly means a lot. We are currently figuring out whether this channel should move back toward more technical deep dives or focus more on real world test projects and practical examples. So please let us know in the comments what kind of content you want to see. Your feedback really helps us to steer the channel in the right direction. And if you'd like to keep watching, you will find our review of the Anycubi Cobra S1 combo right here. A generally impressive entry level printer at a great price point. Or if you're more into DIY builds and high speed printing, check out the video on the fastest Cartesian printer in the world. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.